Giving gay lovers. All right. That's absolutely disgusting. So, welcome to the uh, Coffee Bean Experience. Um, this is a new podcast with David and Isaiah, but it's just David today. And we have a lot of guests here. And so, we're going to introduce ourselves uh, from the left. Their left or our left? Yep. Their left. Case. Their left. Right here. Their left. Their left. Come on. What are we introducing? Just names. Yeah. Names. Wanting your sexuality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We're not covering sexuality today. This is a a, a leisure podcast. Yeah. We'll talk about many things besides people's so, sexuality uh, and sexuality. My name is uh, Kadesh Swanson. I'm a master theologian. I identify as polyamorous. <laughs> <laughs> Who <laughs> went <Sorry. laughs> start? Hi, uh, my name is Dave. I'm the host of this debacle. What's your last name? I'm not giving it for this uh, this podcast. <laughs> my, my name is Elijah Davies. Davies um, <laughs> is my middle name, and I am a aspiring engineer. Um. So my name's Anna, and I'm Kadesh's wife. The master theologian. Because he's yeah. straight. Polyamorous, by the way. Oh. And actually, we do have our, our other host of the show right over here. Isaiah, just give a shout out in the mic. That's good, thanks. All right. So, anyway, so hey guys, welcome to the Coffee Bean Experience. This is just like a cafe style chat about kind of life and, kind of, and what's going on in our lives. And, um, and as you can tell, there's a couple guys here concerned with people's sexuality. So. <laughs> Love that crap. I'm comfortable with mine. Very comfortable. So, we, you know, so the... the hey. Oh, come on in, sweetie. Come on in. Come on. He's just going to hit the So why don't we do this? Let's take a quick poll of the panel here. What is uh, the number one thing in general on your mind right now? What is the number one thing on your mind... Like in your life right now, what's the number one thing you're working on or consuming you? Ready? We'll start with Anna. Why are you always so Sorry. Funny? We'll start with uh, Kadesh. No we started with Kadesh the last time. Number one thing consuming you right now? Yeah, you know, your <laughs> most priority in life. Or... You know, that's a good question. I think that uh, there's, there's a lot of things that I'm focusing on, but I think right now it's just that journey of uh, self-discovery and uh, you know what I'm supposed to be and how that's supposed to manifest in my life and uh, so that's a tough one mm. of course a lot of self-reflection can you tell me a little bit that's uh, that's awesome start tell me a little bit more about it so where are you at with that well uh, in the weeds in the weeds still trying to figure it out figuring out the things that I uh, I enjoy that I'm drawn to why I'm drawn to those things um like I said, it's just, it, I feel like each facet of my life that I focus in on, I get a little more clarity as to whether or not it's important for me to focus in on or something that's just drawing my attention away from achieving that goal. Cool. So give me a couple of things that you're actually, that are in the weeds. Give me a couple of details of those weeds. What are you focusing on right now? A couple of things. Uh, just, I mean, work in one. I... What do you, have, you don't have to name it. I, have, I don't mind corporate sponsorships, but what is your general job? And then, well, that's not really the to me the, the importance. What really oh, is cool. there is the idea that going from an entrepreneurial lifestyle where I you know spent a lot of time with family, made my own money, to now going to a job that requires nine out of nine hours out of my day gone. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow. And trying to like figure out how do I wrap my head around this 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 new stage of life where it's Ooh, cool. like I. I had a certain lifestyle and I jumped right in to uh, this full time job. So okay. it's trying to grapple with that and how my life is supposed to look because a lot of things I used to enjoy aren't there anymore. Right. Slow mornings, spending the day with the family, kind of doing stuff in my leisure, that's all gone. It's I'm there, I'm somebody else's employee, so I can be there, do a certain job, and then when I get home, and it's not much time left. So it's like, okay, well, how do I internalize that? Well, I don't know, don't you go? No, I'm the host. <laughs> But so oh, the host, 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 host doesn't really speak. Uh, I I kind of follow along like the internal reflection and just like seeing where you're where you're at with your life and where you want to go with it. Um, I'm I'm young, so I, I still don't know exactly what you I'm. You want to tell the audience how old you're? 
Uh, I am 21 years of age. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're not going there right now. I'm 23 in Ohio. We're not going there right now. I'm 21 years of age. Okay. 23 in Ohio. I'm in college, so I'm going to be an engineer and, you know. Hi. Yeah. 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 What's, what's going on in your world right now? Number one thing kind of that your world revolves around or what? So what's on your mind or what, you know? My number one thing is um, a, uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out how to be a good mom, a good wife, and at the same time, it seems like I'm a mom to everybody, and uh, trying to kind of figure out that role and figure out, you know, how... I can pursue happiness in that role because I don't really have that myself. So I try to be that for other people. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's kind of my challenge and my struggle daily, I think. Is learning how to, how to balance those different roles and that you're facing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. especially with, um, you know... My siblings, I'm kind of a mom to them, I'm a mom to my friends, I'm a mom to my three boys, you know, it's a lot of adulting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're a wife, a girlfriend, um, you just ended a career, and so you're also transitioning too, right? Yeah, a lot, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. it's definitely been a challenge. I'm trying to figure out where I fit into all of that and, um, you know, how I can find happiness in that role and um and also joy in my sufferings you mm. know because there are a lot of those mm. in daily life so so i'm looking at like so there's actually there's actually a theme that r ran through every one of your guys's yeah yeah it seems like the theme was just kind of self-awareness like any yeah yeah just balance. Balance and kind of finding... I think that I, almost every person I, struggles with. I was going to say, that's that's a theme, though, but that's like a modern theme. Because if you look at, like, if you look, like, retrospective, like, reflections, personal reflections from, like, even 50 years ago, they weren't they weren't thinking about that. They weren't thinking about self, self-awareness. They were more thinking about, like... Yeah, I don't. I don't know where I was going with that, but they, but they, 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 they think of yeah, their priorities were totally different even 50, 20 years ago. Even like they like if you look at like just different perspectives of people from twenty years ago, they just were not thinking about that. They right. weren't worried about that. I think on that note too, though, even as like a mom and a wife and all these things, you know, fifty years ago, that meant a lot. A very different thing than it does now. Like yeah. now, you're supposed to be all things at all times, and mm -hmm. you're also supposed supposed to be fun. You're all supposed to have, you know, girls' nights out, and your house is supposed to and be you're immaculate. Great. You're and, great. Well, I think you mean I think you actually mean <laughs> seventy years ago because we're not two thousand anymore. Fifty years of the nineteen fifties. Well, that's what I mean. Nineteen fifties is 1950s. seventy years now. Uh, seventy years right. ago. Totally. Yeah. And, and I guess what I mean by that is, like, back then, we had really specific roles, and we were kind of, like, stuck in those roles, and it was, for the most part, socially acceptable, and you were just perfect those roles, you know? The husband works, and he comes home, and he well, eats, and... Well, here's the thing, it's like, you go, you go even further back to, like, homesteading, and it was, there was, there was no noise, there was nothing, it was just you, your land... You work the land, you get home, all you're worried about is making sure the roof's not leaking and there's food on the table. That's all you're concerned about. The problem is, you get a next door neighbor now who's potentially harvesting their land or getting more from it more effectively than you are, and so now you become concerned with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. How are they doing that so I can replicate it? Mm -hmm. So then now you go from caring just about yourself to now you're looking at the person next yeah. to you. It Here's the thing. Complicated. Now we have the TV and our phones where everybody across the world is now our neighbor and we're exactly. concerned. And the worst part is, is we're given unrealistic expectations yeah. of how to get to. Yeah. We're seeing influencers, we're seeing celebrities, 
reaching levels of success and notoriety that the average person will never achieve. So now yeah. we're concerned and focused or have these things coming to us that we're never going to achieve. So we're wasting our time thinking about them. And it's always an uphill battle yeah. trying to remove those images from our mind. Yeah. So, let's, so, let's, go, so let's, let's do this, though. I think this would be cool for people. So let's just spend a few seconds. And, I, and Anna, I'm going to have to start with you. Because I've already been blistering Kadesh, you know, all night. All right. But so in your unique areas, in your unique roles, and your age, and your demographic, and where you're at in your life, yeah. what is the number one, um, what is the number one illusion, if you will, or, or I don't, I don't want to say challenge, but what is the number one lie that, I'm just going to kind of go through the list, uh, 20, five, uh, 25, how, how old are you? 20. 28-year-old mom of three, a uh, uh, t- 19 to 23-year-old <laughs> college <laughs> guy, <laughs> so, but, but, also, but also Caucasian. Yeah, race right. is very race is a big issue in our nation right now. So, so what's yeah, the number one illusion? Me, yeah. What's the number one illusion lie that you're that you feel you're facing that you struggle with that you're facing? That you're facing as a 20, 30 year old okay. married. Okay, you got it? Does everybody got yeah, any question? Got okay, got it. All right, so obviously I come from a unique perspective among these men here. Um, but I definitely think, as a young mom, quote unquote, um, you know, just the perfection of whether it be like after you have babies, your body has to be perfect, or your house has to be immaculate, or you should always be happy, like, what's wrong with you? Or, uh, you know, um, your kid is misbehaving, that's all your fault. Those sort of things are so degrading to women. And it's really sad because I've found, especially in our American culture, that, you know, once you have a baby, in other cultures, there's a, um, there's a process. Whether it's... You lay in bed for 30 days and heal while everyone takes care of you and cooks you meals or whatever it is. Whereas in America, they're like, no, go back to work. You're normal. You should, your body should be back in shape. Like, what's wrong with you? And I've really found that to be a challenge. And I also think, um, this is kind of hard for me to admit, but <laughs> I was a part of a lot of online moms groups and I was, I got super into them. I made some really good friends, but I actually was really extremely bullied Mm. and I ended up having to leave them. Mm. And it's the best thing I ever did, honestly, Mm. because they were giving me advice that was not only toxic to my marriage, but, um, it wasn't realistic. It was kind of like a neighbor that didn't know you looking Mm. in on your household from the outside and they don't understand your relationships. They don't Mm. understand. It's like the lie of social media. Yeah. It's like, and so they're like, well, why don't you move where it's cheaper, you know? Well, because my whole family's here and that's important to me, you know? Yeah. And just things like that. And so um, I had to leave those groups, and I'm so glad that I did. But I, I think one of the things I struggled with for a couple of years was the online bullying because mm. they were brutal mm. yeah. and mean. And what, and that's and it's because they can objectify you because they don't have to see you in the grocery store or go to church with you. So they can just blast you double barrel, you know. They don't really have a personal relationship with you. Right. They just let you have it. Yeah, and, and I think uh, Kanesh could attest to this. Recently, I came across this blogger, and she's, like, all about, you know, just the real rawness of motherhood and being a wife and, like, your body's not perfect. And she has helped me gain confidence in mm. ways I didn't even know that I needed. And he always... Can you promote her? Was that, uh, is that a problem? Uh, yeah, if I can... Okay, we can come back to it. <laughs> if I can think of a name. We can come back to it. It's just Canadian. <laughs> okay, cool. Move, let's move down the line yeah, to, uh, like... It. Can we skip me? Uh, for right now, really? Okay. Okay, all right. What is the question? The question <laughs> is, hopefully you've been thinking about it, what's, like, the number one oh, yeah. or lie or that that a 30-year-old very man... But, but try to personalize it. Like, what have you faced and the... Uh, whatever. Unrealistic... <laughs> Societal expectations, whatever. Okay. You know, social media, whatever. Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing is just... Uh, I think for me, like, the biggest thing is just the expectations of, of career. 
and where you should be monetarily sitting. No, I was just the other day looking at uh, where my credit stood, and they have a comparison that says you, everybody else your age. Here's your reported income here. Here's where everybody else is at 30. Here's your credit score. Here's everybody else's at your age. And it's just kind of like, do I look at this and think that that's my value? That if I'm not in that bar on that graph, I'm somewhat less valuable. I'm somewhat less successful. That in, in society's eyes, I am underachieving. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is like I look at those things and while they hold value, like yeah, sure, if you want to get a house or some bigger mm -hmm. things, yeah, they hold some weight. But I feel like there's a lot of emphasis that goes into what have you accumulated? Mm -hmm. And if you're not at a certain level of accumulation of goods, then you're less successful. And I found it to be a lie because in my own uh, like entrepreneurial endeavors, I never was rolling in it, you know, just right. barely making it. But the wealth that I had in being able to wake up to my family, make breakfast, go out to the park, you know, and then come home and then dinner with them and just, you know, relax and just spend with them and be with them. The quality, them. The quality of life. Yeah, the quality of life. Uh, without the money, just the yeah. quality of life that, that the, um, yeah, just the quality was just, was far, I don't know. It just it held more worth and value to me than stuff, than having a nice house, than having new cars, than having things everybody's paying for. Mm -hmm. That is something yeah. worth. Because it so knows has that. Yeah, so I'm going to venture to say, though, because it's crazy the themes that I see. And I, and I know, Elijah, you haven't even, you, you asked for a pass. And so, but I think that you could, like, the themes that I see from today's to Anna. And that I, that I know that even, I, I know even young, and actually Anna and Kanesha aren't too far removed from being single. I mean, what's the number one question a young, uh, there's a couple, there's about three probably questions a young single person gets almost every, like if they're talking to their grandmother and if they haven't seen you in a while, what's, what do they ask you? Uh, what are you doing with what your life? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? When are you going to get, what? When are you going to get married? When are you going to get married? And so it's like these social expectations. And these, so my question, so there's this theme with Anna, and I dare say with, not, not trying to speak for you, Elijah, but but even Kadesh, I, I think there is this, for lack of a better word, and we can, whatever, try to clarify and narrow it down later, but, categorize it. yeah, categorize it. There's this social pressure or this comparison or how you relate to other 30-year-olds or how you relate to other moms, what a successful mom should look like, how you relate to other... 19 to 23 year olds and what, what is that successful young man look like and what are you doing with your life and so my question to you guys is and because we only have about three minutes left is what is what's the genesis of that is it is it real or is it sometimes self implied um, um can you go tell them to cut down the... Hey, guys, can you cut down the back noise in the kitchen? Maybe go downstairs. Thank you guys for enduring that. Um, so what's the genesis of it, and what's the remedy? And is it is the genesis sometimes self-imposed? Do we look at Facebook or social media? I mean, I'm sure you were bullied. I'm, I'm not dis, like discrediting whether you were bullied, and because that might be very real. But some of it might be self-imposed pressure that we put on ourselves. So I don't know who wants to chime up on that. Yeah. I think that, so a little off topic to give some more background to the answer I'm about to give. Um, as one of the, the entrepreneurial endeavors, it was a pipe maker for, for tobacco pipes, you know, things show off homes. So there's real much you do still, I'll do a shameless plug, you do still pipes, KJ pipes. KJ pipes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at it, there's this level, like if you really want to create something because it's an art form, there's got to be a level of you not caring. Because if you do, you will stifle your own creativity in the process because you will become hesitant. You won't make a decision that your gut tells you to make. Right. And that could be the difference between having something that's beautiful and something extraordinary. And in the same way for me, it's, it's not really looking at the genesis as, as important as looking at what am I going to do right now. And that is, I've got to take those, I've got to be mindful of what's going to work best for me and my family laser in on it and just pursue it go that direction put the blinders up all the stuff that we see the neighbors the tv screens that show us everybody around the world doing something else that you're not doing the blinders got to go up and sometimes the answer is 
it may not be realistic to shut off the social media or shut off the screens, but limit it. Allow your own creativity to come through. Allow your own problem solving to come through. Don't allow yourself to come up with solutions that aren't going to work for you because you see somebody else doing it. Right. Come what works best for you from what you see from the people that are closest to you so you can see what's achievable, what's real. And the only way you're going to know what's real is if you are here, now, present in the real world, not caught up in a virtual reality. To put it in consumer material like framework, it's like designing your own pair of shoes. Designing the shoes you're going to walk in, the lifestyle you want to walk in. Anybody want to add to that, or do you want to riff? Do you want to speak to the genesis or the solution? Um, I would just like to add, like, like each lifestyle is so subjective, and like your path is so subjective that like comparing it is the easy way to go. Like, if you just reference yourself to everybody, that's like the easy way out. So if you always look at that, like, there's always someone better than you regardless of what you want to look but don't at you, don't you think that that's kind of natural though to reference ourselves so, yeah no so okay, it's, okay. it's the natural instinct okay. of yourself it's not just be the like, easiest thing no, well, yeah, yeah no it's literally easy it's literally in our nature to compare right. ourselves to other people it's the easiest way so it's it's like in our nature so with modern with the modern era you literally have to go against your nature you have to be like well, there's certain circumstances that I'm not that way. There's certain circumstances that haven't let me reach that limit. So you really have to take that with a grain of salt and understand that you're not going to be the best at this, the best at this, the best at this. Yeah. You're not going to be the greatest in this category. You're not going to be the best mom in this way or the best dad in this way. And you just got to understand that. And you got to understand where your priorities lie. You, as a person. Not just what society wants you to be. Not just what your parents want you to be. Not just what your family wants to be. You want. You got to understand where your priorities lie. That's cool. And the last word on you. Oh, what was yeah. your question? Well, Genesis or, you know, that... Actually, uh, you know, Kadesh and Elijah, we're, talk we're talking about this comparison game, right? This These uh, social pressures, social media... Personas, bull, being bullied. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. so I just want to uh, say the, the girl that really gave me a lot of confidence, she's Canadian, uh, it's at Birds Papaya, that's her uh, Instagram. At Birds Papaya, yeah. that's her Instagram, okay, that's her cool. Instagram. She has a podcast, and um, she just really talks about positivity, like, be who you are, love who you are, don't compare yourself, you know. We're all different, and, like, we can't look like a model. We cannot have immaculate houses all the time. I think the, the hard part for me comes from, like, you know, I can not compare myself, but at the end of the day, I might not have any friends that can meet me on that level. Right. And so there's that aspect of it in my reality, which is just being a wife and a mom. But I think when you can um, really just... Love your family, love yourself, and understand, like, you're there to serve. I think you find a lot of joy out of that. Mm. Good stuff. Well, hey, we're going to wrap up our show. Hey, I want to give special thanks to Anna and Kadesh Swanson, married couple from Olympia. Um, I want to thank Elijah. Thank you for joining us. And actually, my co-host, Isaiah, thank you for being, you want to give, just give a shout out for her. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for, uh, anyway, thank you for joining us for the Coffee Bean Experience. We hope that you have more real conversations, real relationships, because that's what the Coffee Bean Experience is all about, is getting past the illusions all around us. So, God bless you guys.